Chef Lois Ellen Frank, and today I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite dishes of all time. It's called pinyon chili beans, and actually there's a great story that goes with this. Pinyon chili beans is named after the town of Pinyon in Arizona. Uh, it's on the Navajo Reservation, and one of the chefs that I work with, and who I've been working with for a long time, Walter Whitewater, we make this dish, you can make it for two, or you can make it for 200. And nobody notices that there's no meat, it's absolutely delicious. So let's get cooking, let me show you what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna actually cook, but now you would think that you would need oil. I'm gonna use something that is the juice from the beans that I've cooked. I refer to it now as bean juice, and I've actually been teased, all my students and everybody I cook with tease me about this. Uh, but it's nutritious, it's delicious, and so I'm gonna use that in place of oil. I'm gonna put a little bit on the bottom of my pan, and then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saute my onions. And so I'm gonna put this in, and just like if you were using any sort of oil, the bean juice is actually just gonna coat, it's gonna give a little bit of flavor to this dish. So I'm gonna cook this, and for this particular stew, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna use two types of beans. One is a kidney bean, and one is a pinto bean. And together they actually marry perfectly in terms of flavor and nuttiness and the way they're texture, and so it's really quite nice. And um, I'm gonna let my onions saute just a little bit, and then I'm gonna be adding some additional ingredients. So I'm gonna use some fresh garlic, green pepper, I am using a canned tomato, and depending on the type of year, uh, if you can get fresh tomatoes, by all means, you're welcome to use that. If not, what I would suggest is that you get a can of tomatoes, and if you can, get the can of tomatoes without the salt. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of salt, but then you have a little more control over what you're gonna be adding to that, and it just adds for better flavor, and it's a, a little bit healthier for you. So I'm gonna, you can see that bean juice bubbling up, just like you would with olive oil. I'm gonna cook that, and once my onions get clear, I'm going to add my garlic, and we're gonna just cook that for another one to two minutes. I really want that garlic not totally cooked, but just gently cooked. And once the onions get clear, the onion's gonna take a couple of minutes to get clear. We've added our garlic. Next thing we're gonna add is our green pepper. And I've just cut a fresh green bell pepper into nice pieces. I think you want to get a nice biteful in each mouthful. You have to think about who's eating the stew. Uh, but we don't want it so big that it takes up the whole thing. Now I'm gonna cook my green pepper, and if your pan starts to get dry, go ahead and add just a little bit more of this delicious bean juice. And the juice that I'm using today is kidney. You could use the pinto as well, but this has a nice dark color, and the stew's very rich and very dark. So I prefer the darker bean juice for this particular recipe. I'm just gonna let this saute a little bit. It's probably gonna take about three to five minutes. Okay, our vegetables are ready, so now we're gonna add our canned tomato, which we've chopped. These are whole plum tomatoes, which are peeled and chopped, and we're gonna stir that in to our cooked vegetables. And just gonna let that saute for a couple more minutes. Let those flavors of the tomato really get into the stew here. And the next thing we're gonna add, we're gonna add our beans. I have two and a half cups of kidney beans, which I've slow cooked in the crock pot overnight. Two and a half cups of pinto beans. And I'm gonna stir that in. Ooh, it's starting to look delicious. And then I'm gonna add my corn. Now, at the peak of the season, if you can get fresh corn, I do get a fresh corn and just cut those kernels off the cobs, but at all other times of the year I use frozen. And I don't use canned because of course canned has salt and it could have other ingredients and I don't want those additional ingredients in my stew. So I'm gonna add the corn and ooh, it's starting to really look good. The next thing I'm gonna add is I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of salt and I'm gonna add some chili powder. And depending on your flavor palette, if you want it to be mild, I would add a mild 
Uh, if not, I would add uh, something a little more spicy. And we're just going to stir that in. And you can see that it's nice and thick. This is actually perfect. This would go perfectly if you wanted to use this topping at this point for an Indian taco and you wanted to use this on top and then garnish it with lettuce and tomato. But for a stew, it's very, very thick. So I'm actually going to add some liquid um, just to make that stew. And then I'm going to let this saute and simmer. And then it's going to be ready to serve. It actually takes uh, hardly any time at all. So I'm going to add more of my bean juice that I've used uh, to cook with. I think it needs a little more juice. I'm going to take some more bean juice. I'm going to add that. Let's start with a cup. And this is going to where it's up to each individual cook or chef. Depending on how you like your stew, if you like it very juicy, you could add a little more. I like mine kind of rich and thick. And so uh, I think that's good for me. But if you wanted to make it a little thinner, more soupy, you would then add a little bit more bean juice. But you can see now this is really nice. It's really quite thick. And last thing, we're just going to let this sit, let those flavors blend in, and we're going to have a delicious stew. Now, when the stew is finished, I'm going to let it simmer just a couple more minutes. I'm going to serve it today with some delicious no-fry bread. And here you can see I have a basket, and I've actually made, oh, look at how perfect this bread is. And so now that my stew has simmered and all the flavors have come together, I'm going to serve it. And I'm actually going to fill my bowl. This is just one of my favorite stews in the world. And it's got all different wonderful ingredients. I'm going to give, I like to give my guests a full bowl. And this, again, you can double this recipe, triple this recipe, really feed quite a lot of people. I would serve it on the side with a piece of bread. And it's a delicious meal, wonderful. Thick, rich, delicious.